welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you about Peru, the country in South America I just visited. Peru has fascinating history and it is also home to one of the seven wonders of the world, Machu Picchu. Every year roughly 1.5 million people travel to Peru and this area in general is a significant place in Incan history. The Inca were a powerful civilization that developed in the Andes Mountains along the west coast of South America. The mountain ranges helped protect their city-states and allowed for a well-developed government and society. The empire thrived in this region from about 1200 to 1532. The Inca Empire was ruled by the emperor known as the sole ruler. Manco Sapac was the first Sapa Inca and established the kingdom of Cusco around the year 1200. The city of Cusco was the capital of the Inca Empire. A later Sapa Inca greatly expanded the empire by conquering nearly all of Peru. At its peak, the Inca Empire had over 10 million inhabitants. The Inca built large cities and temples made of stone without the use of any iron tools. They also engineered intricate stone-paved roads and bridge systems that extended across their empire. The stones were shaped and fit together perfectly to provide strength to withstand earthquakes and time. The arrival of Europeans in 1520 brought war and disease to the Inca, which weakened the empire. The Inca were eventually conquered by Spanish conquistadors led by Francisco Pizarro in 1533, and he founded Lima, the city of the kings. Lima is the largest city of Peru, fifth largest city in South America. Around one-third of the nation population now lives in its metropolitan area. Central Lima is located at the elevation of 512 feet or 156 meters. The city forms a modern oasis surrounded by the Peruvian coastal desert a short distance west of the Andes Mountains. Nowadays, about 10 million people live in Lima, which makes it one of the largest cities in the world. Due to the proximity of the Pacific Ocean, the weather in Lima is almost always hot and humid, but it rarely rains here. Humidity is close to 100%. Interestingly, Lima never actually experiences heavy rain, only drizzle. Almost all of the Peruvian industry is concentrated in Lima. The capital produces about 70% of the GDP of this country. Construction of Lima's cathedral started in 1535, the same year the city was founded. The Cathedral of Lima displays architecture typical of the Spanish colonial era. The walls of the cathedral are covered by beautiful mosaics. Right here within the cathedral are the ashes of Francisco Pizarro, the founder of Lima. When Francisco Pizarro was assassinated in 1541, he was buried near the Cathedral of Lima, but later moved into the crypt under the altar. In 1891, mummified remains were identified as those of Pizarro and placed on public exhibit. His skull was found in a box engraved with Pizarro's name. The pews of the cathedral and the benches of the choir are of the finest quality and the greater altar is gold-plated and has images of colonial era. The monumental complex of the Basilica and Covenant of San Francisco of Lima is also located in the historic center of Lima. In the basement of the monastery, you will find the bones of an estimated 75,000 bodies. The area originally served as Lima's cemetery, but as the wealthy continued to die, more bones began piling up. As you explore the claustrophobia-inspiring cemetery, you will find bones laid out in unique patterns and displays. It's clearly a tour that is not for the easily frightened. Nowadays, it is a very popular tourist attraction. In this building, you can also find one of the oldest libraries of Peru. There are approximately 25,000 volumes, some dating back to the 16th century. Casa Aliaga, that is also in the center of Lima, is one of the oldest buildings in all of Lima. 
The property was given to a wealthy Spanish family by Bizarro in the 16th century. And this is the government palace and the residence of the current president, Dina Boluarte. And she is the first female president in Peru. Christianity is the largest religion in Peru. But it is interesting to know that the figure of Mary arrived with a Spanish conquest, and her figure was later embraced as the Mother of God who stands with those suffering oppression and discrimination. Peru has rich culture and traditions. One of the traditional drinks in Peru is pisca sour. The most accepted tale is that it began in early 20th century. Victor Morris, an American who moved to Peru, opened the Morris Bar and first made the drink as an alternative to the whiskey sour. It has a couple of ingredients. A pisco, that is South American unaged brandy, egg whites, lime juice, and sugar syrup, all mixed together. And don't forget to add a few drops of bitters for decoration. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please don't forget to put thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Your support is very important and it motivates me to make more videos for you. Lima became the capital of Peru much later. Originally, the center and the capital of the Inca Empire was Cusco. To get from Lima to Cusco, you have to take a plane. And in order to get to Machu Picchu, you can hike the Inca Trail for four days, or you can take a train, Peru Rail Train, that takes you to the small town near Machu Picchu at the foot of the mountain. And from there, you can either take a bus or hike the mountains. There are no roads for the buses to get to Machu Picchu, so you only have these two options. The train ride was over an hour, but it was very picturesque and beautiful surrounding in the mountains and the streams. It was absolutely gorgeous. And you could also see the buildings and the traces of Inca Trail, the bridges, and the terraces for agriculture built by Incas thousands of years ago. Upon your arrival, you will see a little village at the foot of the mountain. There are a number of hotels here, cafes, souvenir shops, and much more to visit. Then you can buy a ticket for a bus and take a 30-minute ride up the mountain to Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is an ancient Incan city, approximately 2,400 meters above sea level, or 11,000 feet, concealed within the mountains of Cusco. It is one of the seven wonders of the world that features breathtaking city remains and beautiful dry stone walls. Regardless of the increase in tourism, this UNESCO World Heritage Site only allows a certain number of visitors to enter the remains each day. So make sure you book your tickets ahead of time. In most cases, you have to make reservations to buy tickets to enter Machu Picchu site at least six months in advance. The government regulates how many people enter the site on a daily basis. And although the tickets are not expensive, but each ticket has a printed person's name that has to match their passport. Tickets and passports are verified at the entrance. And there are definitely no public restrooms on top of the mountain when you enter the archaeological site. There are absolutely no ramps, escalators or cable cars so you have to take the steps anywhere you go. This beautiful Incan city has a mystical feel to it, and it looks like it's floating in the clouds. This high destination city was abandoned around the time the European settlers arrived. It became overgrown, hidden, and forgotten until it was rediscovered in 1911. There is of course a big mystery how this town was built, but there is only one way to experience its spirituality, by going there yourself, visiting this beautiful site, because no videos or pictures can do it justice. We booked a trip through Friendly Planet, the travel agency, and everything was planned perfectly and we had really great experiences. And the services were excellent, from the hotels, 
to the guides in each city. Unfortunately, right now, Peru is considered as high risk for travelers. But if you book through the travel agency, they accompany you everywhere you go. So your experience will be not just pleasant, but also safe. You can only visually see the 20% of the agricultural terraces that Inga's built. The rest is underground and many layers of sand and gravel. So Inga's advanced building methods are still a big mystery. Peruvian cuisine is quickly becoming world famous. If you like fish, you should try ceviche, Peru's national dish. Uh, some of the most delicious dishes we tried were beef or steak, as well as alpaca steak. Trout, raw or cooked, was delicious as well. Adventurous travelers may try roast guinea pig. The Rubens also make their traditional juice drink out of black corn. Did you know that Peruvians first discovered wild potatoes on the shores of Lake Titicaca over 10,000 years ago? You can find over 4,000 varieties of potatoes growing in the Peruvian highlands in a variety of shapes and colors, from blue to yellow to pink to bright purple. Less than 50 miles from Machu Picchu, tucked away in the Sacred Valley, you can visit the Mara salt mines. First built over 500 years before the Inca Empire, this series of over 3,000 salt water ponds are connected by an underground network of canals. As the sun evaporates the water, the salt that remains is extracted by members of the 600 local families who own the pools. The salt content in the spring that comes out of the mountain is about 70%. In comparison, the ocean water is only 3% salty. Peru is probably most well known for its Andean region. The impressive mountain system bisects the country from north to south. A large portion of Peru's population is settled in the valleys and basins of the Andes. Because the conditions are so extreme at the top of the Andes Mountains, only certain products can survive, namely potatoes, corn, and of course alpacas. Alpaca is the only animal that can tolerate high altitudes. Over 70% of the world's alpaca population lives in Peru. This member of the camel family lives in the Peruvian Andes Mountains which runs the entire western coast of South America. The sale of alpaca meat and textile fiber is the main source of income for about 150,000 families in Peru. Alpaca wool comes in 22 natural colors and is considered one of the world's most luxurious fabrics. Alpaca fleece has thermal properties, which allows them to adapt to any temperature change. Because of that, different countries have imported them, including the United States, New Zealand, Australia, and the Netherlands. Each year, South America produces approximately 3 million kilos of alpaca fleece. Peruvian typical dress is beautiful. In some regions, the women wear layers of bright skirts called poleras. Peruvian ponchos made out of alpaca wool are a necessity in the highlands, where the cold can be harsh, and the locals color the wool of the alpacas in very bright, beautiful colors. A rainbow flag was a traditional Inca's flag. Speaking of the rainbow flag, a few years ago the Rainbow Mountains were discovered by some tourists within the Vinciunca Mountains and have since become a popular attraction. The mountain is famed for its natural multicolored beauty, staggering 5,200 meters or 17,000 feet above the sea level. Exposure of 14 colorful minerals to environment conditions such as wind, rain, and altitude has caused them to become so brightly covered. As I mentioned, the discovery was made recently in 2015, when the snow on its peaks melted due to rising temperatures. The rock that was revealed beneath the snow was striped with colors from maroon and gold to turquoise and lavender. Roughly 1,500 tourists braved the elevation and unpredictable weather to get a chance at viewing this national treasure. 
The Amazon River also starts in Peru. Totaling just under 4,000 miles in length, the Amazon River is the second largest river in the world. Beginning high in the Peruvian Andes, the Amazon stretches across Peru, Colombia and Brazil before connecting with the Atlantic Ocean. Amazon River and the surrounding forest are home to thousands of species, both mammals, birds, reptiles, fish and insects with more species being discovered every year. A few notable creatures who call the Amazon River their home are the green anaconda, the black caiman, and the electric eel, the piranha, and the pink river dolphin. On the western side of the lake Titicaca, people live on floating islands made of grass. The inhabitants of the islands even build their houses and boats out of the Totora plant. We don't know precisely when Inca culture began to emerge. However, most scholars place it around the 13th century. There is even an exciting origin story and myth. The first Incas, Marco Capac and his sister, Mama Oclo, were brought to earth by the god Inti and emerged together from the sacred waters of Lake Titicaca. Fire itself began to form around 1400 CE. So when we talk about the Inca Empire, we refer to when the Incas transformed from one of the many dominant cultures in the Andes at that time to a conquering power that eventually ran from modern-day Argentina to modern-day Colombia. This glory as a reigning power was then abruptly cut short, first through the arrival of an invisible enemy, smallpox. Smallpox most likely killed the 11th Inca, who died suddenly of a mysterious illness in 1528. His death quickly sparked a civil war between his sons, which weakened the empire's defenses, alongside the novel disease coursing through the population. These two factors eventually made way for the Spanish to successfully conquer the Incas in 1532. Huacha is and always has been a primary spoken language. Since the Spanish conquest in the early mid-16th century, scholars and linguists have actively developing a written Quacha language. They've used the Roman alphabet. However, even today, most modern spellings of, of Quecha words are contested. So how did the Incas manage to communicate large amounts of data over such a vast empire? They used an incredibly unique and an intricate device called Kipi. The Kipi is a knot record utilizing the decimal system to convey information based on the number and type of knots presented on each string. Incas had a vegan lifestyle. Guinea pig was their main source of animal protein. Even then, the meat was reserved for special occasions. This is still reflected in modern-day Peruvian society, as most Peruvians only eat guinea pig during family celebrations and national holidays. Even though the source of meat protein was slim, the Incas grew and harvested incredible plants, which we now refer to as superfoods. These include over 4,000 varieties of potatoes, goya, maca, purple corn, cacao, peanut, and much more. Most cultures predating the Spanish conquest presented and respected gender fluidity, because the Incas worshipped a dual-gendered god. In addition, women were active members of society primarily responsible for weaving, cooking, taking care of the family and children. One of Inca's concepts was that no one went without food. Inca's intricate and advanced agricultural system and food preservation techniques even existed before the Inca Empire, as people in the Andes have been using innovative agricultural methods for over 8,000 years, such as vertical terraces built for polyculture. It is easy to romanticize Inca civilization because of its obvious architectural accomplishments, agricultural innovations, gender inclusivity, and fascinating cosmology. They also differed from the Spanish and other leading colonizing forces because their arm was not to change the people they adopted, but instead incorporate such cultures' individual strengths into their empire. However, like any dominant group in human history, in some ways they went too far. The Incas had to deal with more than one rebellion, especially in the jungle. Some people resisted the empire with everything they had, 
The Incas based their religion around the three realms, represented by the following three animals. The condor, the puma, and the serpent. The famous Inca Trail is not only 25 mile stretch, but it is also the 30,000 mile interconnected Inca roadway. The Incas possessed a profound knowledge of astronomy and how human beings interact with the natural world. Therefore, they carefully planned the positioning and designed every single structure concerning natural features and how those features play against the stars and planets. For instance, Machu Picchu was built on the very top of a mountain surrounded by the Vilcanota River. Also from certain vantage points within the Machu Picchu citadel, you can observe the alignment of the sun rising and setting over sacred mountain spirits during the solstices and equinoxes. Have you ever heard of mysterious Nazca lines located just south of Lima? The shapes of animals, plants, flowers, and other objects are so huge that you can only see them from the air. The origin of the lines is still very controversial. Rumors range from cultures of the Paracas and Nazca tribes to extraterrestrial aliens. Either way, something worth checking out. The last few days we spent in Cusco. Cusco is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. This city used to be the capital of the Inca Empire. You cannot just come to Cusco by bus. You have to take a plane and the flight takes a little bit over an hour. In Cusco, every corner tells a story and every story is captivating, mystical and inviting. Every corner offers a piece of history and the stones remain alive because they have survived for many years. Cusco witnessed the arrival of the Spanish and yet to this day it conserves an ancestral magic which captivates the thousands of visitors who each year form part of its living history. The imperial city of the Incas was developed as a complex urban center with distinct religious and administrative functions which were perfectly defined, distributed and organized. The pre-Hispanic patterns and buildings that shaped the imperial city of the Incas are still visible today. With the Spanish conquest in the 16th century, the urban structure of the Inca imperial city of Cusco was preserved while temples, monasteries, and manor houses were built over the Inca city. They were mostly of Baroque style with local adaptations, which created a unique and high-quality mixed configuration representing the initial fusion of different periods and cultures, as well as the city's history. Despite urban growth, the sectors that make up the Inca imperial city are recognizable, including the ancient stone structures and the advanced construction techniques. Such structures define and enclose streets, monasteries and churches with the works of art inside them. The entire group of attributes can be found unaltered. One of the main factors threatening the integrity of the city of Cusco is earthquakes. After 1950 earthquake, Many culturally valuable buildings deteriorated. While the buildings that were built in 16th century got destroyed by the earthquake, the Inca structures stayed intact and puzzle visitors to this day by its perfection. It is absolutely remarkable how straight are the corners and the polished stones that fit perfectly together. The art of the Inca civilization of Peru produced some of the finest works ever crafted in the Asian Americas. Inca art is best seen in highly polished metalwork, ceramics, and above all, textiles, which was considered the most prestigious of art forms by the Incas themselves. And handmade pieces can take months to make. Objects using precious metals, such as discs, jewelry, figurines, ceremonial knives, and everyday objects were made exclusively for Inca nobles. Gold was considered the sweat of the sun, and silver was considered the tears of the moon. Copper was another popular material, and these metals would have been inlaid with precious stones such as emeralds, lapis, polished bone, and shell. Alternatively, gold and silver were inlaid into bronze. The Inca royalty only drank from gold and silver beakers, and their shoes had silver soles. Surviving figurines, both of humans and llamas, found at burial sites, and carved in intricate, lifelike detail. Gold and silver were also used for many religious pieces. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I also have a video about packing for Peru and what essentials to bring with you, and I'm going to leave a link in the description below.